Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. This video is going to be a lesson on variable expressions. Pause to check out the timestamps and feel free to jump around the video by using them in the description. While the last video focused on numerical expressions where we knew all the values of all the numbers, this video is all about understanding variable expressions. The key difference between variable expressions and numerical expressions is the fact that we don't know the value of every piece of the expression. When we have an unknown value or a value that can change, we use a variable to represent it. Here are some examples for you to look at. Notice how we use lowercase letters as variables. In each of these four variable expressions, c, f, p, and d all represent some unknown number. And it's unknown to us because it can change. In different scenarios, these variables can represent different numbers. In this specific scenario, c was equal to 7, here f was equal to 4, here p is equal to 8, and here d is equal to 80. However, in other problems, these variables could represent different numbers. Here are some different ways of reading this variable expression. While we can read it as 5 plus c, it's more important that you can understand it as c more than 5, the sum of c and 5, or 5 increased by c. This next one is 9 minus f, but more importantly it can be expressed as f less than 9, the difference of 9 and f, or 9 decreased by f. In this third one, this is read as 6p, and you want to understand it as the product of 6 and p, or 6 per p, or 6 times p. Whenever you see a number directly next to a letter, it always means multiplication. Later on, you'll also see instances where you have two letters next to each other, and that also means multiplication. And finally here, we have d over 5, or d divided by 5. We'll read this as the quotient of d in 5, or d split 5 ways, or 1 fifth of d. As you can see, there's many different ways of reading and writing variable expressions. Going forward, it's really important that you can identify these key phrases so you can actually solve these problems. Besides translating verbal expressions into verbal sentences and vice versa, I'll be going over how to evaluate variable expressions when given the values of the variables, as well as some application problems. I encourage you to grab some paper and something to write with, and let's do some math together. In example one, we're gonna rewrite verbal sentences as algebraic expressions. This first one reads, seven more than a number C. The key phrase here is seven more than. That means that you're gonna add seven onto something. But what are we adding seven onto? The only thing that makes sense here is to add seven onto this unknown number of C. The algebraic expression here is going to be C plus seven. This would be our algebraic expression, and if we knew the values of c, or wanted to substitute in hypothetical values of c, we could then evaluate it. Our next one here says, the product of a number y and 5. Product means multiplication, so we know we're going to be multiplying two things together. But what are we multiplying? Look for the keyword and, and see what's to the left and what's to the right of it. We have to multiply something and something else. Here's that first part, and here's the second part. When multiplying a number and a letter together, we always write the number first and the letter second. We also don't actually write a multiplication symbol between them. 5y means 5 times y, or the product of 5 and y. When multiplying a letter and a number together, you always write the number first. Here we have 3 less than the product of a number m and 8. This 3 less than means that we're going to be subtracting 3 from something, and product means that we're going to be multiplying things together. To see what we're multiplying together, let's look for that word and. We're going to be multiplying this m and this 8 together. Multiplying m and 8 together, we're going to write 8m, since we always write the number first and we don't write any multiplication symbols, and we need to write 3 less than that. This will be our algebraic expression. And finally, we have 4 times the difference of a number f and 3. Times means that we're going to be multiplying, and difference means that we're going to be subtracting. To find out what we're subtracting, we need to look at this word and and see what's to the left and to the right of it. It looks like we're subtracting f and 3. To write our algebraic expression, let's start by writing f minus 3, or the difference of f and 3. And since we're supposed to be multiplying 4 times this whole thing, we'll put parentheses around the f minus 3 and write a 4 in front of it. This means 4 times the difference of a number f and 3. Here in example 2, let's rewrite each of the algebraic expressions as a verbal sentence. Pause the video to see if you can come up with some on your own, and unpause it to see if we agree. You could say this is the sum of x and 4, and you can also say this is 4 more than x. Another option is you could say 4 added to x. These are just three possibilities. Now try this one. Pause it to think about it, and unpause it when you're ready to check. 
One option is you could say five less than the product of three and y, or you could also say the difference of the product of three and y and five. Let's try another here. We could say seven more than the quotient of w and two, and we can also say the sum of the quotient of w and two and seven. And let's try one more here. For this one, we can say the difference of the product of 27 and f and the square of a. These are some of the different ways we can read these algebraic expressions. In example three, we're gonna try evaluating some algebraic expressions. In each of the algebraic expressions in this example, a will always equal four, b will equal three, c will equal five, d will equal one half, and e will equal two thirds. Let's start with the algebraic or variable expression 5a plus bc. This is what we call a variable expression. Since we know the values of a, b, and c, we can substitute them in to create a numerical expression. a is equal to 4, so we can start off by writing 5 times 4. Remember, 5a just means 5 times a. Then we're going to add the product of b and c. b is equal to 3, and c is equal to 5. Remember that bc means b times c, so we have 3 times 5. Now we have a numerical expression that we can solve. Following the order of operations, let's start with 5 times 4. 5 times 4 is 20, so we can write 20 plus 3 times 5. Between these two operations, multiplication is going to come first. 3 times 5 is 15, so we can write 20 plus 15. With only one option here, we're going to add 20 plus 15 to get a final answer of 35. Since we were given the values of a, b, and c, we were able to actually solve or evaluate this algebraic expression. Let's try another here. We have 30 over c plus b, e. Since 30 over c just means 30 divided by c, we can substitute in 5 in for c and write 30 divided by 5 plus, and here we're going to multiply b and e together. b is just equal to 3, and e is 2 thirds. Remember that fraction bars are just a form of division. While we have division and multiplication, whichever one comes first left to right gets to go first. Starting with 30 divided by 5, we're going to get 6 plus 3 times 2 thirds. Between addition and multiplication here, we need to multiply 3 times 2 thirds. To multiply 3 and 2 thirds, we can write 3 as 3 over 1, and 2 thirds is still going to be 2 over 3. We can cross cancel the threes to make one and one, and that'll equal two over one or just two. So now that we know three times two thirds is equal to two, we can write six plus two. With one thing left to do, we can say the final answer here is eight. Here's another one. Let's start by substituting our values in for each of these variables. A is equal to four and B is equal to three. So AB means four times three. We'll start by writing four times three here and adding c, which is 5, and we're going to multiply that by the quantity of 7 plus b squared. Now since b is equal to 3, we'll substitute that in and raise 3 to the second power. Now we have a numerical expression that we can solve. Since we have parentheses here, we have to start by looking inside here, and within those parentheses, we have to start with the exponent, which is 3 squared. 3 squared is 9, so we're going to write 4 times 3 plus 5, times a quantity of seven plus nine. Sticking with the parentheses here, we're gonna add seven plus nine, and that's gonna be 16, so we'll write four times three plus five times 16. Since we have two multiplication problems, we'll start from the left and go from left to right. Four times three is 12, so we'll write 12 plus five times 16. Five times 16 is 80, so we're gonna write 12 plus 80 and 12 plus 80 is just going to equal 92. When a is equal to 4, b is equal to 3, and c is equal to 5, this variable expression is equal to 92. Here's one more variable expression with a fraction bar. Substituting 4 in for a, we'll have 4 squared plus c, which is 5, divided by d, which is 1 half. That's our numerator. And we're going to write this over b times c, which is going to be 3 times 5, minus 3e, which is 3 times 2 thirds. Really, really important, make sure you guys remember that when you see a fraction bar, it always groups the numerator and denominator. These are grouping symbols that will never be drawn, but are actually there. It's also a really good time right now to remind you that the fraction bar is also a division symbol. 
Writing this from left to right, we can write the numerator as 4 squared plus 5 divided by 1 half in brackets, and divide that by the denominator, which is going to be 3 times 5 minus 3 times 2 thirds. When we have two different sets of parentheses, it's okay to pick one thing to do from each one of them since they're completely separate. Inside the first set of brackets, the most important thing to do is 4 to the second power, or 4 squared. Inside the second pair of brackets, the most important thing is to do 3 times 5. 4 squared is 16, so we can write 16 plus 5 divided by 1 half. And 3 times 5 is 15, so we can write 15 minus 3 times 2 thirds. Inside the first brackets, we have to do 5 divided by 1 half next. And inside the second brackets, we have to multiply 3 by 2 thirds. 5 divided by 1 half is equivalent to 5 times 2 if we keep change flip or multiply by the reciprocal, and that's going to be equal to 10. For 3 times 2 thirds, that's going to be 3 over 1 times 2 over 3. The 3s are going to cross cancel, and we're going to be left with 2. Since 5 divided by 1 half is 10, we have 16 plus 10 in the first set of brackets. And since 3 times 2 thirds is 2, we have 15 minus 2 in the second set of brackets. Over here, we're just going to add 16 plus 10, and over here, we'll subtract 15 minus 2. 16 plus 10 is 26, and 15 minus 2 is 13. 26 divided by 13 is equal to 2. Now let's try an application word problem. Pause the video to read the question to yourself, then unpause it to go over it together. I'm going to start off by creating a verbal model here. To get the total number of problems that Angela has completed, we're going to have to take the number of problems she's already completed, and add that to the number of problems that she completes going forward. From the problem, we know that she's already completed 18 problems, and we know she's going to continue completing 15 per hour. Adding these two pieces together, we'll get the total number of problems that Angela's completed. Since Angela's completing 15 questions per hour, we could represent this with 15H. If H is 0, 0 hours go by, she can't complete any more problems. If H is 1, 15 times 1 is 15, when 1 hour goes by, she completes 15 more problems. If h is equal to 2, 2 hours goes by, and she completes 30 problems, since 15 times 2 is 30. 15h, or 15 times h, represents the rate that she's doing more problems. Taking the 18 problems she's already done and adding it to this rate is going to equal the total. Our expression of how many problems Angela has completed depends on how many hours that have gone by, but this right here is our algebraic expression. When h is a smaller number, Angela's done less problems, and when h is a bigger number, she's done more problems. The question then asks us a hypothetical of what if 9 hours go by. So that's saying what if h is equal to 9. If 9 hours goes by, let's figure out how many problems Angela would have completed. Substituting in, we'll have the 18 problems she's already completed, and add that to the 15 times 9. Following the order of operations, we're going to have to do 15 times 9 first. 15 times 9 is 135, so we can write 18 plus 135. Adding 18 and 135 together, we'll get 153. Therefore, we can say that in 9 hours, Angela has completed 153 total problems. And let's try one last problem here. Pause the video to read the question to yourself, and unpause it when you're ready to go over it together. Let's start by drawing a rectangle to represent Julian's desk. We're told that the length is equal to 3 more than double the width. To double the width, we would multiply that by 2. And to write 3 more than that, we would add 3 on afterwards. Since they don't tell us anything about the width, we just have to say that the width is equal to the width. For the length, I'm going to use a cursive L, and for the width, I'm going to use a W. So we have W times 2 plus 3. And again, for the width, we're going to use a W, and that's going to be equal to W. Remember, whenever we're multiplying a variable and a number together, we always write the number first and the variable second with no operation between. Here we can write L is equal to 2W plus 3, and we can say that W is equal to W. Relabeling our rectangle here, the length is 2W plus 3, or double the width plus 3, and our width is still W, and I'm going to leave that alone here. Recall that the formula for perimeter is equal to twice the length plus twice the width. Since we know the length is equal to 2w plus 3, we can say 2 times 2w plus 3 plus 2 times w. Remember we said that this is the length here, and this is the width. 
This right here is our variable expression that represents the perimeter. The prom then goes on to ask us what the perimeter would be if the width was equal to 15. That means they're asking us to figure out what the perimeter is if w is hypothetically equal to 15 inches. Substituting that in, we're going to have 2 times the quantity of 2 times 15 plus 3 plus 2 times 15. Following the order of operations here, we'll start with 2 times 15. 2 times 15 is 30, so we'll have 2 times a quantity of 30 plus 3. And we still have 2 times 15 over here. Next, we need to add 30 plus 3. And since that's going to be 33, we're going to have 2 times 33 plus 2 times 15. Next, we're going to multiply 2 times 33. That's going to be 66, so we can write 66 plus 2 times 15. Then we're going to multiply 2 times 15, and that's going to be 30, so we'll have 66 plus 30. Adding these two together, we can say we have a final perimeter of 96. Therefore, we can conclude that if W was hypothetically equal to 15 inches, then the perimeter of Julian's desk will be 96 inches long. Let's go back and see if this makes sense. We're told that the width is 15, so that would be 15 inches here and 15 inches over here. Together that would make 30, and it makes sense why we have 2 times 15, or 30 down here. And remember that the length is supposed to be 3 more than double the width. Well, double the width is going to be 15 times 2, which is 30, and 30 plus 3, or 3 more, is 33 inches. That means up here is 33 inches, and down here is 33 inches. Together, 33 and 33 make 66. So it should make sense that we have 2 times 33 here, and 66 inches here. Adding all four of these sides together, or adding 66 plus 30 together, we get our total perimeter of 96 inches. And that wraps up this video on variable or algebraic expressions. I hope you found this video useful in understanding variable or algebraic expressions just a little bit better. Keep up the good work, and I'll see you in the next one.